Currently, CDI has over 100 people working here, majority of which are scientists working on product development, production and process development for the, to develop this manufacturing process that we have for manufacturing stem cell lines. What we've done here at CDI is take that process and really take it out of the laboratory and put it into an industrial environment that get, then can be shipped frozen all over the world to be studied as a true human surrogate uh, for biology. And we currently have well over a majority of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies buying our products. The big ones that everybody is familiar with, the Pfizer's, the, the GSK's, GlaxoSmithKline's, the Bristol-Myers Squibb's, um, we also are, uh, have as our customers a, a lot of bio, uh, pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies uh, for, for use in discovery research. And then in addition, um, many of the academics uh, researchers that are NIH funded have begun to uh, utilize our cells to really study cardiac biology from a human potential. There's been an unmet need in the pharmaceutical industry uh, to understand uh, toxic effects of compounds. Uh, cardiotoxicity, for instance, is now, or heart toxicity, has become uh, about equal to liver toxicity in terms of drug withdrawal and failed programs within the pharmaceutical industry. So it's always been very, very hard to source human heart material and usually use animal models, but those animal models are different in their normal electrophysiology of the heart. And there's been a lot of drugs that actually got to clinical trials and passed clinical trials that ended up being toxic to the human heart. Our first entry was to produce a cell model that could replicate as close to human biology as possible in a dish such that companies could, could predict toxicity before they went into later stage animal and human clinical trials. But there's an awful lot we don't understand how to do yet. Um, I think that developmental biologists will be pretty good at quickly working out how to make most of the clinically relevant cells in their body. But that's, that's a process that will likely take 10 years because there's a lot of cells that we're not very good at. There's a lot of cells we can make, like the cardiomyocytes. There's been many examples now of, of companion diagnostics from a genetics perspective and using genomic information. Um, I think the next step in that beyond this kind of research and development area that it, we're really um, accelerating today is that there will be a time when every individual could potentially have their own IPS cells made and then any terminal cell made from that individual such that we could make those cells, for instance their heart cell or their liver cell or even their neurons, such that we could test them prior to that person taking a drug. We've raised hundred million dollars over the course of the company and there has been no venture capital investment. It's all been raised directly from investors. Remember, the publication of IPS only occurred in 2007 for the first time. So it's relatively new and so scientists are still working through the protocols in their academic labs. But here at CDI we've put 75 people, we've had a hundred million dollars at our disposal just to make sure we're doing it very well. That we can do this in high quality, quantity, and purity. It's got to be reproducible because we're selling it to scientists as a, re as a reagent. So it's got to be the same every time. If we think about personalized medicine as being the transfer of the, the uh, bench to the bedside. What IPS technology does is really complete that circle and bring the bedside back to the bench so that we can really study why individuals respond in the way that they do.